Prayer is the greatest privilege that we have. Prayer is not just a duty or an obligation. It's not a last-ditch effort. It's not, well, I've done everything I know to do. I guess all I can do is pray. Prayer should be our very first line of defense. But you have to have faith and confidence in the power of prayer, and you need to believe that God hears you. And even if you don't get some kind of an outstanding breakthrough immediately, you still need to believe that when you pray that God goes to work in your life, and at the right time, you will see change. And I think a lot of us wonder, well, what is the right way to pray? And the disciples actually had the same question. So in Luke chapter 11, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who's in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Amen. Well, that took all of about 30 seconds. And every denomination around the world prays that prayer. There's probably not one of you in here tonight that did not recognize that prayer. In 40 years of teaching, I've never taught on the Lord's Prayer. And I walk in the mornings and I pray and I don't know why, but I get a lot of great anointed creative ideas when I'm walking. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I was praying the Lord's Prayer and God began to just take it apart for me and show me just really how amazingly powerful this prayer is. And I felt very compelled that I was to teach on this prayer. And I think after hearing this teaching tonight that you will never again pray what we call the Lord's Prayer. And it not means something a great deal more to you than it might right now. So we're all going to pray this together. We're going to put it up on the screens. Are you ready? Let's go. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, our Father who is in heaven, if I don't work at it, I could never, I'd spend the whole night talking about the first sentence of this prayer. Our Father. God is our Father. Our Father. And that's especially good news to those who had an absent father or no father or even worse, a bad father. I think honestly, like the situation I was in, and many of you had similar situations. You were mistreated growing up. Maybe you weren't loved. Maybe somebody yelled at you all the time. Maybe you were hit or punished unfairly. Maybe you were sexually abused like I was. But I would have been better off to have had an absent father rather than the one that I had. And so I have no frame of reference at all for what it would be like to have a loving, earthly father. Now, those of you who had a great dad, you should appreciate him, and you should tell him how much you appreciate him, and you should let him know that you're grateful for the way that he raised you, because not all of us had that opportunity in our life. But God always wants to be anything and everything to us that we might have missed in the natural. And the Bible says in Psalm 27:10, even though my mother and my father have forsaken me, the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his own child. So guess what? You all have a loving father. My daddy loves me. Can you shout that out? My daddy loves me. Amen. 
There are 63 scriptures in the Bible that make reference to the fatherhood of God. We're going to look at just a few of them. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, New American Standard says, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom are all things. And we exist for him. I love that. And we exist for him. We exist for him. We exist for him. Amen. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we exist through him. Now, Romans 11.36 is one of my favorite scriptures. I love Romans 11.36. And I open this up sometimes. I did this last week, and I just look at it, and I just, I just shake my head because it's just so powerful. Romans 11.36, for from him and through him and to him are all things. For all things originate with him and come from him. God our Father is the source of all things. Everything that we need is wrapped up in him. All things live through him. Everything that's alive is alive because God gave it life. And all things center in and tend to consummate and to end in him. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Now, although this message tonight might be considered a little more spiritual, it is also very practical because when you really know who God is, and that he's for you, that he's never against you, that he loves you, and that he is the source of everything that you need, boy, does life ever get good and exciting. You have a father who loves you, and nobody better get in his way when it comes to his kids. From him and through him and to him are all things. In other words, it's just all about him, isn't it? You know, when we get in trouble is when it becomes all about me instead of all about he. Amen? Isaiah 64, 8, New American Standard. But now, oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. Huh. We are the clay, and you are the potter. <laughs> we are the clay. So God, you can take us and just do whatever you want to with us, and it's really none of our business. We're not here to boss you around. And all of us are the work of your hand. I'll tell you, any one of you who feels bad about yourself tonight, I just wish that I could unzip you and fill you full of Psalm 139 that says, in our mother's womb, he created us with his own hand. <laughs> Intricately and curiously, in secret, he created us and formed us. And God looked at everything that he made and said, it is good. It is good. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're no good. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you were an accident. They didn't want you. Even if your parents didn't plan to have you, God planned to have you. And he's got a purpose for you and a plan for you. And he is your father. You have somebody on your side that is the biggest of the biggest of them all. You know, I can remember our son Daniel when he would play outside. You know, his dad's a pretty big guy, 6'4", six, 6'4 four, six, four and a half, pretty muscular. And you know, when the neighborhood bully would get after Danny, he'd come screaming toward the house, Daddy! <laughs> and that was pretty much all there was to it because 
Dave sometimes looked to me like he was going to tear the door off the hinges getting out to his kid to make sure that nobody hurt him. And let me tell you something. Your father has the same attitude toward you. And I remember with Danny, he was not, he was just a real happy, sanguine. The teachers would say that he had overly developed social skills. That meant that he just talked way too much. And he just thought everything was a party. And so, you know, we were trying to train him to be responsible in life. And he had a list of chores written on a piece of paper. They were on his door. And when he did them, he got little check marks. And if he got enough check marks, he got stars. And when he got so many stars, then he got a present. But you know, not one time when he would scream for help, did Dave ever stand up and say, Joyce, I hear our son screaming. Would you go downstairs and check the chart? <laughs> Come on, when you need help, your father, your daddy God, does not go check your chart to make sure that you got all the right check marks on it before he decides to help you. He is your father. And he loves you. Mm. It's just like snug. How many of you got a nice fuzzy blanket you love? That's the way this part of this prayer feels to me. It's just like. See, to be honest, because of the sexual abuse, I never one time in my whole life ever remember comfortably sitting on my father's lap. There's so many things that I missed and many of you missed that we don't even know what it was that we missed because there's no frame of reference out there for it. But let me tell you something. God will give you a double recompense, a double reward for anything that you missed. And God has invited us into intimate relationship with him. Jeremiah 3.19, then said I, this is God speaking through Jeremiah, how I would set you among my sons and give you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of the nations. And I said, you shall call me my father, my father, and you shall not turn away from following me. 2 Corinthians 6.18 And I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the Lord Almighty. And one last one Romans 8.15 For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out Abba Father. Abba is an Aramaic word that most closely is defined in English as Daddy. Abba, Father, Daddy, God. Amen. Well, what do fathers do? Well, they provide, they nurture, they train, they comfort, they encourage, and they correct. But everything that they do, everything they do is done for your good. And it's hard as a child when your parent says, I know you don't get it now, but I'm just doing this for your own good. Even when they punish you or take something away that you want, and they say, I'm doing this for your good, you just don't get it. And it's the same way with God. Sometimes he doesn't let us do the things that we want to do, and it's for our own good, and we need to trust that just like we want our children to trust us. Now, I don't know who it's going to be or how many people it's going to be or if you're in this building tonight or if you're watching my television. But I can tell you that there are some people whose lives are going to be totally turned upside down and put in the right place just by understanding tonight that God is your father, your daddy God. Our father... I love it. Who is in heaven? God is on his throne in heaven. But you know, God lives in two places. He 
He lives on his throne in heaven, but he also lives on the throne of our hearts. How much closer can you get than inside? You know, it seems to me that religion is all about me trying to reach God. But Christianity is about Christ reaching down to us. He lives in you if you're a believer. Christ in me, the hope of glory. You are the home of Almighty God. We are his house. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.16 that collectively as a body and individually we are the home of God. When you go home tonight, you take Jesus home with you because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, but who also came down to redeem me to touch me, to heal me from my loneliness and my brokenness, to save me, to energize me, and to give me a life worth living. Amen? Amen. The greatest thing that happened to me when God touched my life in 1976, I had been a believer for a long time, but I had no intimacy, no closeness with God. And you know, back in the 70s and 80s, there was a great move of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people were being filled with the Spirit or touched by the power of God or whatever terminology you want to put on it. And I don't glorify experiences, but I'll tell you what, when you come to the point where you know that you know that you know that you know that God is not just way off somewhere, but He is with you everywhere that you go. He will never, never leave you nor forsake you. You are not alone. Here it comes. Holy is your name. Woo! I may get raptured tonight. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I got so stinking excited when I was studying for this. Can I tell you something, and I mean this with all love and respect. We have heard so much about the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. And I preach it all the time. But I think we also better hear about the holiness of God and the judgment of God and the reverential fear and awe of God that if it doesn't come back to the church, we are in serious trouble in the times that we're living in. Amen? Yes, God loves us, and because He loves us, we can live a superior, higher life. We don't have to just, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, not just to give us a few goosebumps and a funny language to pray in, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to conquer sin and to live for the glory of God. I, I probably should just tell you right now that from here on in, this message is not for the faint-hearted. This is just... <laughs> when we recognize the holiness of God, the holiness of God, the Holy One, <laughs> If it were not for us being able to go to God through Christ, not one of us could live through a moment in the holiness of God. When we recognize the holiness of God, we are filled with reverential fear and awe. Why do we have so much sin in the world today? And why is there even so much sin among God's people? Because we lack reverential fear. And I'm not in any way suggesting that we be afraid of God. I'm not afraid God's going to hurt me. He's my father. I know that he loves me. 
but he is to be reverenced. And we need to understand that God is not just our buddy. He is God and he is a holy God. And if God says, do this and you'll have a good life, do this and you won't. If you do this, you're not going to have the life that God wants you to have. Every man will eventually give an account of himself to God. Every man, every one of us will stand before God and give an account of ourselves to God. And this is not spooky, scary preaching. I told you this morning, I've told you tonight, God loves you. His mercy is new every day. The grace of God is always available for us. But God means business. And I just think it's time for us to straighten up a little bit. I think it's time for us to get a lot more serious about the God that we serve and the fact that we are alive on the planet today and there surely must be a purpose and God needs us to do something besides sit around and want to get another blessing for ourselves while we watch the rest of the world die and go to hell. Amen. I'll give you a sneak peek into one of the points for tomorrow. The best way to increase your happiness is to give yourself away. I'm not up here doing this for myself tonight. I couldn't be any happier if I tried. <laughs> Have we forgotten that God is a consuming fire? Our God is a consuming fire. The baptism of fire. We need more teaching on the baptism of fire. John said, one is coming after me that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, we get cute in church. Oh, God, we sing our songs, let your fire fall. <laughs> well, <laughs> when God's fire comes in your life, I can tell you what happens because I've had it. He burns up everything that's not consistent with his nature. And whatever happens to be left, he sets on fire for his glory. Did you hear me? When the fire of God comes in your life, it burns up everything that's not consistent with his nature, and it sets on fire what happens to be left so God can use it for his glory. I tell you what, I don't know what side of the fence you're on. Or if you're on the church side on Sunday and the world side on Monday. But I'm on a mission to kick people off the fence. We are sanctified. And that word means set apart for a special and a holy use. That is my glass for these meetings. And we don't use it for anything else. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. I am the only human that drinks out of this glass. Yeah. Now, it's just a pitiful example, but it's set apart for my use. And although it's a glass, people have reverence for my glass. How many of you understand? Well, this is a a bad example of what God is saying to us that we are set apart sanctified for his use we belong to God to almighty God our father who art in heaven holy is your name you're not going to pray the Lord's prayer anymore and pray it the same way you did when we started <laughs> this prayer covers everything Revelation 4, 1 through 8. After this, I looked and behold the door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me was like the calling of a war trumpet. <laughs> Come up here and I will show you what must take place in the future. And at once I came under the Holy Spirit's power. And behold, the throne stood in heaven with one <laughs> seated on the throne. And he who sat there appeared like the crystalline brightness of jasper and the fiery sardius and encircling the throne was a halo that looked like a rainbow of emeralds. Whew. 
24 other thrones surrounded the throne, and seated on these thrones were 24 elders, the members of the heavenly Sanhedrin, arrayed in white clothing, which represents holiness, and crowns of gold upon their head, which represents being purified. Out from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. <laughs> and in front of the throne, seven blazing torches. That doesn't just sound like a sweetie pie. <laughs> And these torches burned, which are the seven spirits of God, the sevenfold Holy Spirit. And in front of the throne there was also what looked like a transparent glassy sea as if made of crystal. And around the throne in the center and at the side of each throne were four living creatures who were full of eyes in front and behind with intelligence as to what is before and at the rear of them. In other words, God sees everything, folks. The first living creature, the one in the being, was like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third like the face of a man, and the fourth like a flying eagle. And I don't pretend to understand all this. Just stick with me. And the four living creatures individually had six wings. They were full of eyes all over and within, underneath their wings, and day and night, they never stopped crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, omnipotent, who was and who is and who is to come. Come on, give our holy God a shout tonight. Now, Maybe I'll just sit down and tell you this. Maybe I'll seem a little nicer if I sit down. I don't know. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> if we really, if we really, 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 really know who God is and how wonderful and amazing he is, <sighs> why don't we just stop doing some of the dumb stuff? Let's just start with something little like, let's make a commitment to not gossip. We're not talking about doing things to get God's favor. We're talking about doing the right thing because he is a holy God and because he deserves... deserves our praise, and true praise is more than singing a few songs on the overhead once a week. <laughs> He's looking for worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> worshipers. You do it unto the Lord. And until we come to the point and this is a great day when you come to this point. God, you are the all-seeing eye. And you see everything. And no matter where I'm at, you see me. And I want to live.
live for you. I'm going to do what I do unto you. And if I don't get any appreciation here, I'm doing it for you. Amen. Okay, well, we're going to be here all night if I don't get going. In Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, we see Isaiah's reaction to God showing up. <laughs> Verse 1, In the year the king Uzziah died in a vision, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the skirts of his train filled the most holy part of the temple. That was the glory of God filling the temple. And above him stood the seraphim, and the word seraphim means the fiery burning ones. <laughs> And above him stood the seraphim, and each had six wings, and with two they covered their face, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And here was Isaiah's reaction. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am ruined and undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Isaiah said, I am ruined and undone. He was convicted just of the things that he said that were useless. Hmm. If somebody put the sentence to you, God is, and asked you to finish it, wonder what people would say. Maybe God is good, God is loving, God is merciful, God is gracious, God is forgiving, God is awesome, God is holy. But I wonder if anybody would say, God is terrifying. See, not many of you understood. You're like, but it's a holy terror. It's not like, it's not, I'm not afraid God is going to hurt me. I'm afraid I'm going to hurt him. I don't want to hurt God. I don't want to do things that are displeasing to him. I don't want to hurt the heart of God. He is to be worshipped. Your kingdom come. We're moving on. Your kingdom come. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. What does that mean? Just to put it simply, church, we need to be a lot more concerned about the people that are lost and about the growth of the kingdom of God than we are just getting what we want all the time. Our world is filled with pain and immorality of every kind. Don't seek after things. Don't ever waste your time seeking after things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. The cry of our heart should be, God, what is my assignment? What is my assignment? You know, your, your assignment may not be the worship leader or the pastor or to do this, or the owner of a business. Maybe your assignment is to clean the toilets in the church, but do it with a smile on your face and do it under the Lord. Because somebody's got to do it. Why not you? Amen? I love it when people say to me, that's my assignment. We need to know what our assignment is from God. Maybe your assignment right now is just raising your kids and being a great wife. Maybe your assignment right now is being the greatest dad. But maybe your assignment is also reaching out to some other child in the church that doesn't have a father and including him. What is your assignment from God? It may be a public assignment. It may be a very private assignment.
whatever we do in secret unto the Lord, we will be rewarded for openly. Matthew 6. Do your part to see the kingdom grow. Ask God to break your heart over the conditions in the world today. And learn to be an intercessor for the lost. You know, the Bible says that the whole earth is groaning. Waiting for the redemption of the sons of God. I don't know about you, but... Now, I don't want to misstate this. I'm happy, but you know what? I'm not happy here. I'm not fulfilled here in the earth. You know why? I don't belong here and neither do you. This is not our home. This is a passing through place. There's nothing here that's ever going to totally 100% satisfy us. So why don't we stop trying to get things in the world to satisfy us and just get around to doing what we're here for, which is living for the glory of God. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but always yours be done. You know, we quote the scripture all the time, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And we only hear the all things work out good. That's really all people hear. Oh, yes, hallelujah, this is going to work out good. To those who love God and are called according to his purpose. For those who crave and pursue and passionately go after the will of God in their lives. And I can tell you, if you want God's will more than you even want to breathe, if you would rather die than to live without God's will, then there is nothing that can happen to you that won't work out for good. And I know some of you, you've been around long enough like me, you, you're just kind of like I am. You're done with the whole world thing. <laughs> I mean, if, if we're not in the will of God, what do we have that's worth anything? What have I got if I get my own will? It's not going to make me happy. I've been there, done that. God, I just can't be happy if I don't get married. Well, God, I just can't be happy if I have to stay married. Well, God, I just can't be happy if I don't have kids. Well, God, I can't be happy with these kids. Well, God, I can't be happy if I don't get a better job. I can't be happy if I don't have a bigger house. You ain't going to be happy no matter what you get. in stuff. There's only joy in Jesus and when we seek first the kingdom, he will add the things. And we're not going to care that much. I tell you what, I get, I get really tickled when God does special things for me and he does all the time. But it's so refreshing not to have to chase him. Merciful day. Sweet single lady, don't chase a man. Chase God. He'll make the men chase you. Let me back up. The white man. Jesus said, can you drink the cup that I drink? Let me tell you something. Doing the will of God is not always easy. It's not all just fun and games. And a lot of times there's a lot of groaning before we get to the glory. Amen? Amen. We're having fun and this is a fiery message. But let me tell you, I realize that what I'm asking people to do, to forgive the people that hurt you, to stop talking bad about the people that 
Or so. Ugh. Man, sometimes I almost have to bite my tongue off to shut my mouth. For this is the will of God, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. For this is the will of God, that you should be consecrated, separated, and set apart for pure and holy living. That you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice. <laughs> that each of you should know how to possess, control, and manage his own body in consecration and purity, separated from things profane and honor, not to be used in the passions of lust like the heathen who are ignorant of the true God and have no knowledge of his will. You stepped into a holy meeting tonight. How many of you are with me? You understand that if we don't hear this, along with everything else, that we are going to get ourselves in deep, deep trouble. Grace is not an excuse to live a sloppy life. It is the power of God not to have to. And the love of God covers a multitude of sins. But Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. He did not say, if, if you obey me, I will love you. God already loves us. But our love for him, when we see his holiness, when we see how amazing he is, when we know that he's our father, that he lives in us, how can we not want to say, my God, my God, my God, your will be done in my life. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. You know, if you look at the story of the manna for the Israelites, it came one day at a time, just enough for one day at a time. And you know, God wants us to learn to trust him one day at a time, one moment at a time. One day at a time, trusting God day by day. Don't worry and be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have anxieties and worries of its own. God is our provider. If they gathered more than they needed, it got rotten and began to stink. Our needs are many. And God provides them all. One of the things that we desperately need is strength, spiritual strength. We need encouragement. We need peace. We need provision. We need companionship. We need wisdom. We need discernment. And God gives us everything that we need. And my God shall liberally supply and fill to the full my every need. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do you really want God to do that? You probably didn't hear me. Do you really want God to forgive you the same way you forgive everybody else? That's his promise. We better take this serious. Hmm. Well, I didn't like the book. Don't look at me like that. Matthew and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven, remitted, and let go of the debts and given up the resentment against our debtors. 
Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, giving up the resentment, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up the resentment, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Well, we don't just hear that all the time, do we? I think if I were you, I wouldn't go to bed the night before I forgive everybody that I got anything against. I mean, I'm serious. I am as serious as I know how to be. But I just can't help the way I feel. No, you can't help the way you feel, but you can make a decision. God, I will not live with a heart full of hatred after what you have done for me. I will not take your mercy and your goodness and then hold things against other people. And you get on your little face and you bury your face in the carpet and you stay there until God gives you the grace and the strength to get up and love people that would fit into the enemy category. Boy, I wish I had another night. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Every day of your life, pray that. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Let me tell you a quick story that a woman told me last week. She told me I could tell it. I just won't use her name. This is a woman who's been a Christian many, 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 many years. Middle-aged woman, been a Christian, as long as I've known anything about her, and just long time been a Christian. But she has a little problem in her heart. She doesn't like her husband. <laughs> and um, she just said, I just don't like him. I just don't like him. And uh, she's been married to him 45 years, but she don't like him. I want you to listen to me. Because she didn't work with God to fix that problem in her heart, there's a little door open. And one day she gets a message on her computer from some man she's never heard of. Hi. Dumb mistake number one, she answers back, hi. <laughs> Discernment doesn't do that. Long story short, and it took a long time. Like I said, she told me I could tell this. This guy conned her out of $200,000. And this woman is born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, church gone. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We've got things in our heart. Don't ignore those little things. Little foxes spoil the vine. Got to keep your heart clean before God. Because if you don't, the devil's going to end up using it against you. This woman now is like, I cannot believe that I did that. You know what? No discernment. Pray for discernment every day of your life. Lord, deliver us from evil. Show me wicked people. Help me get away from people that are not right for me. Help me, God. Show me who's really my friend and who's not. Help me not to come into temptation. The disciples fell asleep for grief and Jesus said, Can you not get up and pray that you don't come into temptation? Don't wait until you are in the throes of the biggest temptation and you're in this huge emotional mess. You pray every day. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Why? Because you're the only one that has the power to do it.
feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on their face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't hear shit that I think is amazing Waiting For my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it The noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip And lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement, the top is so vacant I don't hear shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign Yeah! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each do update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance Yo, so do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've